Look at the steam. I mean, how can you go wrong with hash browns, potatoes, bacon, eggs, cheese? I mean, and the variety that you could make this dish is huge, very huge. Instead of bacon, you can use ham. Instead of ham, you can use sausage. You can do bacon and ham. Um, I added some green peppers in here. You don't want to add green peppers? Don't. Add some red peppers in it. Uh, onions. Um, you know, maybe a different kind of cheese. I have no idea. Daisy May. Daisy. Hey. No, no, no. She's usually not a barker. No, no. Hey. No, no. You're okay. Okay, so we're going to take a taste. Hi, I'm Amy, Amy Roloff, and we're in my little kitchen once again. You know, ever since it's just been Chris and I, Chris typically doesn't really eat breakfast, and you know, when you're just by yourself, um, I don't always take the time to make pancakes or waffles or French toast. I usually wait till I have people over. So uh, we are going to make an egg bacon hash brown casserole. There's so many different variations to this that probably you have done or recipes that are out there. So this is definitely something that you can make your own. Um, but it serves a lot of people, which makes it nice. So the holidays are coming up. So I thought this would be a good take on that. If I had ham, I'd probably mix in a little bit of bacon and ham. You can definitely substitute the bacon for sausage or turkey sausage or, you know, something of that sort. But when you cook it ahead of time, make sure you, um, you know, drain the fat, obviously. So anyway, I know my ring, my ring keeps hitting this bowl here. So, um, Anyway, so let's get going. We are doing an egg bacon hash brown casserole. I mean, come on, you got potatoes, you got eggs, you got a little bit of meat, you got a little flavoring in it. What more do you need? So I've got a, a whoa, whoa, Nelly. I put my pan on ahead of time and now it's smoking. So I wanna saute a little bit of the, <clears throat> I wanna saute some of the onions before I incorporate it in this dish. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, let me get this plate here. I went ahead and cooked my bacon already. So I've got eight slices of bacon here. I hope it's eight. Well, it's close to it. But about eight, eight slices of bacon because you want some bacon in here. And then we are going to go ahead and saute the onions and continue on. I think that threw me for a little bit. You know what? I went ahead and decided to cook a little bit more bacon because obviously I don't know how to count. So we are going to go ahead and cook up three more pieces of bacon because I could have sworn I had eight pieces, but I only have one, two, three, four, five. Not enough. Bacon makes everything. Do you hear that sizzle? Okay, as this bacon cooks, I went ahead and chopped up about a small, one half of a small green pepper but I think the chunks are a little bit big, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop those up. Chop those up a little bit more. And plus my garlic. Yeah, you know, if you're gonna put bacon in something, five is not enough. And then we're gonna put in maybe about six to eight eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and call it eight. You can go ahead and use milk or cream, but I had some half and half, so I'm going to use uh, some half and half. And I'll get you that measurement here in a minute. 
because the eggs and the milk measurements are kind of are kind of important here because you don't want to add too much cream or milk or half and half and have this whole casserole thing too runny. That would not be fun. So really all I'm doing is just chopping these green pepper pieces up a little bit more. If you don't want to add green pepper to it, don't. I think what I'm going to do for the topping, you could either do it with sun-dried tomatoes, but I think that would be a little chewy. So I'm going to take some cherry tomatoes that I have in my refrigerator. I'm going to kind of quarter those. I forgot to get green onions at the grocery store. So in green onions place, we're going to garnish it with some chives that came from my garden. I still have a few, even in this cold weather. Okay, I think, I think that's enough. And I have one bag of hash browns here, 30 ounces. So anything in this recipe, if you're not gonna have a lot of people, because this will serve like six, eight. If you got a lot of guys, maybe just six. <laughs> But if it's for a woman, you know, a woman gathering or something, definitely maybe eight, but whatever. You can cut this recipe in half if it's just a few of you. Okay, I think, let me check on my bacon because the one thing you don't want to happen is burn bacon. Okay, just a little bit longer here. In the meantime, I will grate some more cheese. So what I have here is one cup of Monterey Jack, one cup of like medium cheddar, but I'm gonna do a little bit more medium cheddar for garnish on top, or if you need some extra. Because come on, bacon, cheese, and eggs. I mean, this is comfort food galore. I'm going to try and come up with, uh, I don't know if I did pumpkin pancakes before, but I'm going to come up with a pumpkin pancake recipe. I think the biggest thing about pancakes is not over mixing it. Because how do you get those big, fluffy pancakes? So I'm going to go ahead and shred a little bit more cheddar cheese. And I'm going to put this in another bowl because you know what will happen? <laughs> if I put it all in the same bowl, I will use all of it in the mixture. And that wouldn't be fun. And since it's just a little cheese, I could have used my big food processor, but um, I don't know. I just do it by hand. Okay, there we go. Let me get another bowl for this. Oh yeah, I gotta do my garlic. Okay, let me check my bacon because I'm gonna do my onions and green pepper together. But I will cut up this garlic really quick. I just want the subtleties of garlic. So this is just one clove, not very big. I would just say, you know, like regular size. And stop. Okay, I feel like I'm in a hurry because you know what? I don't hear my bacon kind of cooking anymore. So it better not be burnt, people. Oh dear. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's check the bacon. Oh, we are done. Are we done? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. 
But how about this, you guys? I got three pieces of bacon still needing just a little bit more cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and add the green pepper and onion on the other side of the pan. Can you like see this in here? Mm -hmm. Here, you want me to come in and get a good shot? Well, yeah. I'll come in when you invite me. Ah. Oh, I see, okay. Ready? So I have maybe about, I didn't want a strong onion flavor. So maybe about a half a cup, if that, and a half a cup of a green pepper. And what we're gonna do, once this is done sauteing a little bit, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of salt. I know it's cooked in bacon grease, so I'm just gonna add, look at this. That was like a dash, just a dash. Let's check on that bacon. Okay, we're multitasking, people. We're gonna add in a little bit of the garlic here in a minute. Okay. Might as well chop up my chives while that's gone. This is just gonna be a little bit of garnish. We'll get my tomatoes out once I put the casserole in. Oh, you guys, it smells so nice. Nothing like fresh herbs. Okay, enough of that bacon down, do you think? Okay, my bacon is done. worried about bacon because I definitely have a tendency to make it too crispy when it's in dishes like this and that's not a fun thing. I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic and then we're going to go ahead and chop up this bacon. If I can. Tell you, I think I need my knife sharpened again. I really want to take my knives to a professional. I mean, you, depending on what you want, I want them really, the bacon chopped up. I don't want the big, huge chunks of bacon in a bite. because we're gonna mix all of these ingredients in with the hash browns. So basically you're making kind of like a custard. And then we're gonna create our, you know, mix in our wet ingredients. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and put this all in with the hash browns. I think my bacon's cooled down a little bit. If you see a really fatty piece, just cut that off. Okay. Oh yeah, what did I tell you? Um, 
Preheat your oven at 350 degrees. Okay, so the reason I'm making this cas this egg casserole dish is that um, I'm not sure who is going to be coming over and spending the night during the holidays, whether Molly and Joel will be able to make it, but I know that they're going to be here in January, so I'm really looking forward to that. So I thought this would be a great um, dish to have, you know, the next morning. And you can prep all of this ahead of time, put it in the fridge, and then you're all ready, set to go in the morning. But take it out at least 30 minutes or something so your dish can become part of, you know, room temperature. Okay, this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and just add in the chives to my little empty little measuring cup here, just so I have a place for it. Get rid of this. Because we're going to get our... We're going to get our onions and pepper over here. Okay. I think what I'm going to do with this onion and green pepper because I want some of the grease out of it I am going to just because that's what I want to do if you don't want to don't feel the need don't but I just feel the need to just get some of that grease out so the one thing that I'm really trying to do is um, take care of my cast iron and I'm loving it. Meaning, don't let it rust. Okay. We're... Pan's hot. Okay. We're just gonna pat this a little bit. Here we go. Gonna mix this in a little bit. What else do we got here? Tell you the truth, I could have almost had 10 pieces of bacon in here. So if you wanna add bacon and mix in with a little bit of ham, that's pretty good too. Okay, we got that. Let me see here, I wanna... Oh yeah, I got it. I got them somewhere, people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to read my notes. So, I think we are there. So, we got our onions. We got our green peppers. We got our bacon. We are going to add in the cheese. I first want to add in a little bit of red pepper flakes. Because... I think adding red pepper flakes kind of adds that little spice, that little heat, and kind of breaks up the richness of this. I mean, think about the possibilities of this egg casserole. I mean, you could put jalapeno peppers in it, red peppers, uh, black beans, I mean, so many things. So we're gonna add in the cup of Monterey, the cup of cheddar. I'm gonna get a fork for this. just to help me mix it in better. You know, oh, by the way, I did, you know, take out your hash browns and let it thaw a little bit. It'll be easier to mix in with all the ingredients. But um, also, if you see a lot of water content or something like that, you know, you can pat it dry. But you know what, I still feel like this is a lot of potatoes, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. If you, I don't know, a couple of dashes. If you want a more smoky flavor, if you're not using like, 
I don't know, chorizo is a little too spicy for me. Um, but like Italian sausage or something like that. Feel free to have that smoky flavor. Add some smoked paprika to this. But I tell you, this is your basic egg casserole dish and I love it. Okay. I'm gonna find my butter and grease. My dish over here. I think I need another big dish for all the eggs that I gotta do. So, let me go get a bigger bowl to do the eggs and a little bit of sour cream and the half and half, a little bit of mustard, I think, for a little bit of flavor. So anyway, I'll be right back. I'm gonna use a little butter. If you want to use oil, that's fine. I'm gonna use a little butter to um, just grease my baking dish a little bit. And what kind of size is this baking dish? I'm not even sure if it's quite a nine by 13. So it's what I had. Um, I've got a couple of really nice pieces of Le Creuset in my cupboard here, and this is one of them. So I know it'll be, it's kind of like baking it in a cast iron, but it's ceramic and a little easier to take care of and clean up. Okay, well, that was a little tough getting the wrapper off the butter. I don't know why, but uh, I'm going local people using my Tillamook. Um, okay, just a little bit of butter. I'm just gonna just grease it a little bit. I don't want the egg mixture and the cheese and everything to stick to half the pan. The baking dish. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to put in eight eggs. I better save some of these eggs because um, you'll never guess what I'm going to make next. Ooh. Okay. One. Two, three, four, whoops, oops, five. Oh, come on, Amy. Man, I almost did it again. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, we're just gonna move that over there. Um, I am gonna go ahead and add in how much of this stuff. I'm gonna add in about, oh yeah, here we go again. Brand new. Like I said, we're adding fresh. I used to make this sometimes a lot, or a quiche, when all the kids were at home, when I was living at the farmhouse. And, uh, you know, they'd have a lot of people sleeping over on the weekend. And again, why can't I open this? Oh my gosh. Okay, here. Let's just get something, poke it through. Because who wants to watch me struggle <laughs> with taking the cap off or the little thing? <laughs> Lord above. Anyway, I used to, I did make big casserole, egg casserole dishes uh, when the uh, when all my kids were home and their friends would sleep over. Or we had family over or the holidays. So I've got eight eggs. We're going to add in a cup of half and half. If you want to use cream, that's awesome. You can do it that or even milk. I don't know, I just like the half and half. It gives a little bit of the richness from the cream, but also milk. So we'll do that. 
Come on, we gotta add in a little bit of sour cream. How much did I say here? I don't have this memorized because I'm doing it all for you guys. So we're gonna add in about a half a cup of sour cream. We're just gonna add in, whoa, just a couple of squirts. I like stone ground mustard. It doesn't have as big of a flavor as Dijon mustard, but that's okay. If you wanna use Dijon, 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 I think that's it. Dijon mustard, go right ahead. A lot of times it's all about um, making sure your eggs and your wet ingredients, but all the other flavorings, you know, it's okay. So I think this is about a half a cup. So we're gonna do that. Um, so anyway, what else? I got that, I got that, I got my mustard, I got red pepper flakes are in here. We are ready to go, but because we have eggs, let's continue to layer our flavoring. So we're gonna add just a little bit of salt in there because you want your eggs to have some flavor to it, seasonings. Just a little bit of pepper. If you don't want the black specks, use white pepper. And now we're just gonna slightly whisk this, break up those yolks. See, sometimes I have to get on the stool even doing this, because look at how high this is, even though I've lowered my counter. Okay. think that's enough. We just want to mix it in. We don't want to beat it to death, but we definitely want to incorporate the eggs, the milk, and the sour cream. Okay, here we go, people. Okay. Here's our baking dish. We're going to just pile all of this in here. I know, I'm going to dump it. This is the hash brown, the cheese, the bacon, the onions, green pepper. Okay. I have never tried making this dish with browning the uh, hash browns first, but I think what may happen if you do do that you don't have enough of the potatoes to really soak in the egg mixture. We're just gonna smooth this out. The one thing I really like about this is that cheese is intermixed throughout the whole thing. It's just not this one big layer on top. Okay. And so then we're going to, um, I want to make sure I tell you guys the right stuff. Look at you guys. I am so nervous doing this because especially when so many of you absolutely follow a recipe, I try and make sure I have it exact, especially if you're doing the, uh, looking at the video and the recipe. So we got this all in here. Then we're going to pour the egg mixture. Do I have everything? Salt and pepper. <gasps> I think I do. Okay, and then we're gonna slowly make sure we pour this evenly. Whoa, kind of reminds me of a quiche. But I think this is a fun holiday group gathering. It's something that you don't really have to be in the whole kitchen the whole time because you can make it ahead of time. Okay. Okay. So I have eight eggs. Oops, my apron got in the way. So we are gonna bake this at 350 degrees and I'm gonna say for about 
What did I say? I don't know what I said. We're gonna bake it anywhere from about 30 to 35 minutes, but check it, depending on your oven, check it at um, um, uh, maybe 25 minutes. Just stick a knife in there, and if the egg comes out clean, then it's finished. 30 minutes, okay, 35, but check it around 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna cover this. I know I have a lid here, and I think I'm gonna do that because the moisture will help keep it dry and or, or keep it moist without drying out or you can just put a piece of foil over here too but since i got this lid we're gonna do that oh yeah 30 minutes oh dear i already have something in one of them one of my ovens to clean up you guys okay there we go oh boy i didn't prep this very well i gotta adjust my oven rack I think my casserole is done in the oven. Oh, wow, look at this. It gets a little toasty on top. But we're not done yet, you guys. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top. I've turned off the oven because I think the heat of the oven will continue to melt this cheese. So reserve a cup. Or not about a half a cup, or it depends on how much cheese you want on top. But just reserve a cup of the cheddar cheese. We're just going to put this back in the oven until the cheese melts, maybe like five minutes. And then it'll be ready to serve your guests at a very lovely brunch. I would serve this with a little sweet, something sweet. Um, I'm going to come up with a recipe for apple cider baked donuts. Oh, so lovely. A little bit of greens if you want, or some toast. It, though this has a lot of uh, hash browns, but maybe some of those winter fruits, something citrusy. I grew up in Michigan and, you know, oranges, grapefruits, lemons, limes, all of that. They're seasonal in the winter. But anyway, let's get this back in the oven and get this cheese melted. See you back here in about five minutes. Okay, so the egg casserole is done. The cheese has melted. I hope it tastes good. Let me get my, here we go. Sorry. Okay, okay, should we dress it up, make it look pretty? If you want, you could really uh, chop up some Roman, Roman, uh, Roma, oh my Roman, oh my gosh, Roma tomatoes. I would really cut them up in small little chunks if you want to garnish it that way. Or uh, I would just slice up tomatoes and put them on the side. Uh, I think that would be a great compliment to the egg casserole. Um, it might prevent people from doing ketchup, but I do not think it'll prevent Chris from putting uh, hot sauce on it. But I am just gonna sprinkle it just with a little bit of chives. I just think that's enough prettiness for me. And here you go. Cup of coffee, oh, some fruit, a mimosa. Oh my gosh, Christmas morning, this is gonna be great. So let's take a look. Let's have a taste. Of course, I just did get this out of the oven. I'd probably let it cool for at least 10 minutes or so. But here we go. One. OK. 
Okay, I'm not sure what my new dog, um, Daisy, is going to be barking at. Okay, here we go. You know what? The first piece is always the hardest to get out. So I'm going to use a little fork to kind of help me along. Oh, see, I knew it was going to be hard. There we go. Okay. Oh, just put that there. This pan is still hot. Oh, look at the steam. I mean, how can you go wrong with hash browns, potatoes, bacon, eggs, cheese? I mean, and the variety that you could make this dish is huge, very huge. Instead of bacon, you can use ham. Instead of ham, you can use sausage. You can do bacon and ham. Um, I added some green peppers in here. You don't want to add green peppers? Don't. Add some red peppers in it. Uh, onions. Um, you know, maybe a different kind of cheese. I have no idea. Daisy May. Daisy. Hey. No, no, no. She's usually not a barker. No, no. Hey. No, no. You're okay. Okay, so we're going to take a taste. I know it does Sorry, look hot, doesn't it? Don't burn your mouth. Mm. 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 This was hot, but you know what? It was also so delicious. In fact, I probably wouldn't add any more cream, or, I mean uh, cheese, but then maybe a little bit more cheese. I'd probably definitely add, instead of eight pieces of bacon, maybe 10, or maybe uh, six pieces of bacon and add a little bit of ham into that, just to build it up a little bit more. I think that would go great. But other than that, this is so, so good. I mean. Do you want to explain the missing bacon? No, it's in there. Well, here I thought I miscounted on my bacon, but lo and behold, because I did not catch him in the act, I really did cook six strips, six pieces of bacon, thinking six was enough. But then when I counted it, <coughs> Daisy! So, when I went back, I counted only five. And I'm thinking, gosh, I could have sworn I counted six, but oh well, I have been known to make some errors and miscount. Guess what? Uh, Chris took a piece of bacon on his way out the door because he had some errands to do. I knew I wasn't going crazy, so that's why I had to add even more bacon. But anyway, eight slices, 10 slices, whatever. But this is so, so good. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. I think eight eggs were plenty. If you wanted to add an extra one, go ahead. I wouldn't add any more milk or any of that stuff. Um, so yeah, this is so good. You guys, you can find this recipe over at amyrolloxlittlekitchen.com or my YouTube channel. I would love it if you guys subscribe. So from my kitchen to yours, thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, bye. We'll get a picture of me. Hey.